Hi, Elaine here. Are you looking to create a highlighter pen effect in Affinity Publisher? It might just be easier than you think. The whole point of using a powerful app like Affinity Publisher to create your designs is that you're able to get them to look exactly how you want. And if that includes making it look like parts of your text are highlighted, you'll love this technique. In fact, we have three different techniques to explore to achieve the same effect. First, there's the manual method. No, don't do it. Then there's the textiles method. A big improvement over the manual way. Finally, there's the grouped textiles method, which is positively perfect. Seriously, the manual method is only to be considered when you have no more than two seconds to get the formatting done and you swear you'll fix it later. This method uses the character panel. If that isn't open, then go to the menu, then go to View, Studio and select Character. For me, that pops up on the right hand side. So I'm going to pull it out so we can see it better. There are two colour options available from this panel. There's the one that by default is black and that's the font colour. Next to that, we have the background colour. And here's how you create that effect. Let's make a selection. It could be a word, it could be multiple words, or it could just be a couple of characters within a word. Then move over to the background colour option. This gives access to both the colour options and the swatches. So I'm going to make a selection of a yellow and you're done. Now, additionally, you could also choose to make that text bold or italic. So with the text selected, background colours already applied, change the weight of the font to black and it looks like it's bold. But all of that is manual. It's a process that would need to be manually repeated for each block of text that you need highlighted. So let's take a look at the first better option. Text styles are the way to go. They're more automated, they're more flexible, and they provide much faster formatting. Affinity Publisher supports three types of text styles. Paragraph styles apply to entire paragraphs of text. Character styles apply to a range of characters, so they're more granular than paragraph styles. And finally, we have group styles that can be used for organization and automation. Our highlighter styles would be character styles because we want the flexibility of them only applying to specific words or phrases and not to be limited to applying to only entire paragraphs. We need to use the text styles panel for this. If that isn't open, go to the view menu and down to studio and ensure that you have a tick next to text styles. For me, this is already open. It's actually hiding behind the layers panel so I'll just bring that to the front. The first thing to point out here is that I've configured the text styles panel in two different ways. First of all, I have it set to be hierarchical. And secondly, it's sorted by type. Now, how I've done that is from the burger menu. I have a tick next to show hierarchical and I also have a tick next to sort by type. The options taken together create a style tree where the paragraph styles are shown before the character styles. So within the panel, I have a base style and the tree is hidden underneath the disclosure arrow. Within there, you can see subordinate styles, styles that are based on the base style. Within each of those, it goes down another level. Those styles are based on the body style and the body style is based on the base style. So for me, it's really useful to have it showing in that kind of way. But your preference may vary. Also to be noted there is that the paragraph styles are above the character styles. So let's create those highlighter styles, starting with green. So at the bottom of the text styles panel, there are three options for creating new styles. The first one is to create a new paragraph style, the second, a new character style, and the third, a new group style. So as we've said, this is going to be a character style. That brings up the character style dialog box. First thing to do is to give it a name. So this one for me is going to be highlight green. We only need to make one change in here for this to add a green background to our text. And that is to go into the color and decorations option on the left. And we have two color options here, just like in the character panel. But whereas in the character panel, it was the font color 
and the background colour, in here they're known as the text fill colour and the highlight colour. So it's the highlight we want, so put a tick in the box, click the option, that again reveals the colour panel and the swatches panel. I've already defined the colours that I want for this, so I'm going to go to swatches and here are the four colours that I need. My first one being green, so I'm going to apply that from there. You can see the style settings at the bottom, highlight colour green and click OK. And it's created, it appears in the textiles panel. So all we need to do is repeat that three times for the other styles. So the second one I'm going to create is orange. And again, I'm just going to go to the colour and decorations, put a tick in the highlights and choose the colour I want from the swatches that I have created and OK. And do that twice more for the pink and the yellow. So highlight pink, over to colour and decorations, tick in the box, click swatches and choose the colour. And finally, the yellow one. Colour and decorations, tick in the box, click highlight, click swatches and choose the yellow colour. And now we've got all of those styles in the textile panel. So let's apply them. So I'll select a word here, put that as green, another one in orange, another one in pink and we'll select a couple of words to have highlighted in yellow. So the styles are there, they're all working. If that's all you need, you're done. But if you want to go for best practice, keep watching. Why should we group styles? There are two reasons to take the extra step and create a group style for the highlighter styles that you've created. One, group styles provide the optimal organisation for your styles. With the view settings I use, the highlighter styles will all be displayed in a container the name of which will be the same as the group style. Secondly, you can make changes to all of the highlighter styles by changing elements within the group style. So let's have a look at that. Before we can add these styles to a group style, we actually need to create the group style. So the button on the right of the creation options was to create a group style. You'll notice in this Create Group Style dialog box, under Type, you could change this to Paragraph or Character at this point. But by default, because we've selected to create a new group, New Group is selected as the type. So it needs a name. I'm going to call this Highlighters. And that's it. I'm not making any changes to this at the moment. So click OK and it will appear in the Text Styles panel. At the moment, our individual highlight styles are separate. What we need to do is move these into the highlighters group. To do that, I'm going to open the green style by double clicking. To move it, I change the based on option from no style to the highlighters style. And that has the effect, when we click OK, of moving the style so it's underneath, it's subordinate to the highlighters group style. So do the same with the other three. Based on, choose highlighters, click OK. Open up the next one, based on, choose highlighters and OK. And finally the yellow one, based on, highlighters and OK. Now the only change is that the highlighter styles, the individual highlighter styles, are now subordinate to the highlighters group style. Other than that, absolutely nothing has changed. The look of the content the styles are applied to, exactly the same. It's purely an organisational change at this stage. It determines where the styles are placed in the style tree inside the text styles panel. But here's the second practical way in which a group style is useful. Let's say that I decide that the highlight would look better if it was bold as well. I may be tempted to go into the individual style, so let's go into the yellow style, and underneath the font option, change the font weight so it's bold, and click OK. And that has the effect that the yellow highlight is now a yellow highlight, and it's bold as well. But it hasn't impacted the other styles, because I made the change at the individual highlight style level. So. 
Let's undo that. A much easier way to make global changes when I want the changes to apply to all of the individual highlight styles is to go to the highlighters group and double click that. And then in the font section in there, change the weight of the font to bold. Doing exactly the same thing, but at a different level, a higher level. And that then applies to all of the individual highlight styles by making one change instead of four. So let's recap. We covered three options for creating highlighter styles in Affinity Publisher. First, there was the manual format via the character panel. It was time consuming to update, error prone when you're making changes, so only use it in an emergency. Secondly, we looked at the individual character style method. It automates the process of formatting. It ensures that you have consistent formats used throughout your document and it's easy to update individual styles. Finally, we took it a step further and we created a group style and that provided the ability to make formatting changes to all the highlighter styles at once by changing formatting options within the group style. It also, from an organisational perspective, makes it really easy to transfer the highlighter styles to other Affinity Publisher files. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.